Hey guys, welcome to Mad Dad Stuff. For this week's stuff, um, I'm going to be testing out, I wanted to test out the uh, capabilities of the router sled that I built um, in last week's episode. Um, so I haven't really got the materials for a chopping board or anything else fancy like that. So instead, I'm going to be building some crib boards. I remember playing crib when uh, I was younger, uh, we used to go, me and, my, me and my friend used to go up the Q Club in my village, uh, play some snooker, eat Brannigan's crisps, drink pints, uh, and play crib. Which, now I mention it, sounds like I was old when I was young. But regardless, uh, uh, today I'm going to be uh, gluing up and making some crib boards. Um, but as always, before I do that, uh, I'm, uh, let's pop over to the kitchen where I've got a uh, roast chicken for you. Hey guys, welcome to the kitchen. Today I'm going to be preparing a, uh, a chicken and some potatoes to go on the smoker uh, later. So uh, I've prepared the potatoes first. So these are just sort of normal potatoes from the supermarket. Uh, I think they're Maris Pipers. Um, and what I'm going to be doing with these is just going in with a bit of oil to coat them. Uh, and I've also got just a bit of Italian style herb blend from uh, also from the supermarket which I'm just going to sprinkle over uh, a little bit of seasoning and we'll give those a good stir just to make sure everything's coated And that's those prepped. Uh, later on I'll be making a little, uh, I'll be putting those in a tray suitable to go on the smoker. I might make a little foil hat for them just to um, capture some of the smoke um, that comes up in. Um, but essentially, tater is done. For the chicken, I've just got it in this glass bowl here. Um, the chicken is just a small chicken. Uh, again, I don't want to uh, I don't want to cook a massive one, uh, it's just for me. I'll be eating leftovers for a week otherwise. Um, I probably could eat a whole chicken, who am I kidding? Um, but here is the, the chicken, um, and what I'm going to do is, uh, again, I'm just going to put a little bit of olive oil on, just to try and get the skin crispy in the smoker. Like today, I won't be going in with a water bowl. I don't want um, a moist atmosphere in the, um, in the smoker. Uh, creates sort of like a rubbery skin, so water bowl out, and uh, hopefully when we'll get just get the dry heat and the smoke into this chicken. So going to give this a bit of a an oil up. Uh, try and remember again to use just one hand, <laughs> so I don't get contamination everywhere or chicken juice everywhere. Um, coat on all sides uh, with this oil, um, and then. Also in the cavity, and then uh, the the rub that I've got today uh, is in this bowl here. So I've got some brown sugar, some garlic powder, some onion powder, some oregano, some salt, some uh, what else have I got in there? Some chili powder, some smoked paprika. Um, I think I've said brown sugar, but brown sugar. Uh, and yeah, so let's give those a mix round. Oh, I didn't bring a spoon. I use the back of this spoon just to give that a mix round. Then uh, I'm going to go in with the rub. Um, I'm going to probably use most of this rub in here. It's quite a lot, but uh, I want a generous, uh, a generous seasoning. I'm going to try and um, get some in under the skin as well. So I'll just. Uh, release the skin a little bit um, and put it under um, and get that all uh, all rubbed up. Okay, so uh, with that all rubbed up, I'm going to let I'm going to cover this over with some cling film, pop it in the fridge, 
uh, let that marinate for a few hours uh, while I get on with some stuff. So materials I'm going to be using today for uh, the crib board are some sapili. So this is um, some sapili. Could be some. Uh, it could also be a bit of mahogany. Uh, to be fair, it's sort of a, the same family. I think sapili is a little bit harder, um, but. Um, I got this from the uh, wood recycling project um, uh, for, I don't know what, it's an off, it's just an off cut of, uh, of some peely. And I'm also going to be using some oak, um, another off cut of oak um, that I just have in my workshop. Uh, so those are the two um, main components of the board, both hardwoods. Um, both uh, finish really well, so I should be able to get a nice, uh, a nice game board out of, out of the two bits of wood there. Um, and that is the main components. So uh, off camera, I've just cut the sapili down to length, and I'm just preparing the edge of it for um, for use. So I've got it uh, clamped in this jig. So this is a jointing jig that I use for the table saw, um, and it is just two bits of plywood with these toggle clamps on top. Um, which clamp down the wood uh, and I've got a little runner underneath which runs in the, uh, the mitre tracks on the table saw uh, so this um, is a mitre track um, and what that because that mitre track is parallel to the blade uh, when I run the sapili or when I run the uh, bit of wood that's sticking out the edge through the blade I should get a parallel edge and that can then be my reference edge for making the uh, cuts and using in my uh, crosscut sled and also when I join the wood together it should give me a, um, a neat finish or There we go, a nice straight edge for me to start work on. Okay, so I've edged the um, all the boards. I've now got my uh, fence set up at the correct distance away from the blade. Um, I'm just going to run the edge that I've just um, uh, made parallel with the blade against the, the fence and um, cut the strips that I want for uh, for the board and I'll do that on this and the sapili um, and then we'll stick them together so I've got my pieces cut um, before I get to gluing I'm just gonna have a once around with the shop vac so I've laid the um, the material up in the uh, in the clamps so um, and what I'll do is I'll just put some glue on the faces of these clamp them together the reason I've got two sets uh, is because I've decided to recess the playing cards into one uh, into the halves um, and then have a folding uh, lid so um, it'll give me somewhere to put the game pieces so we'll uh, get those glued up and see how that turns out in a bit So there's the boards um, in between the clamps. Uh, I'm just going to clean up a little bit more of that glue, squeeze out, and then go make a cup of tea. So I've taken the game board out of the clamps, um, and I've just laid it up on my uh, router sled, ready to be routed. So um, I'm just going to set the height on that, um, and uh, we'll get that flat.
Okay, so that is, uh, I've taken both sides down. Um, I've created a lot, I've taken a lot of material off. That was a really poor glue up because um, it was really uneven on the on the sides. I've taken off much more material than I wanted to, but it is now uh, flat. Um, I'm just gonna have to get the shop back out again. So originally my intention to have two bits of laminated uh, Sapelian oak, which I have got, but where I've um, done a really poor job at laying it up, so I didn't make sure all the pieces were touching the bottom of the, um, of the clamp. Um, if you can imagine with uh, this one, what has happened is instead of all of them being flat on the on the bottom bar um, some of them were at different heights so when I've squeezed that all together there's so much material that I had to take off uh, using the router sled um, that what I've ended up with is two thin pieces so instead of making a presentation box um, I'm just gonna make two crib boards instead um, which much easier but not what I intended um, maybe I'll save the design that I had in my head um, for the crib boards for another time um, when I've uh, when I work out uh, what I'm doing with my with my flattening um, but overall um, not not too displeased with the way that's come out still a few uh, tool marks um, on there that I just need to sand down um, but I'm going to sand those down and get this marked up and draw some holes in it um, for the for the playing pieces. So here I'm just using a um, a steel rule and pencil just to mark out the uh, tracks. So on a crib board um, or some crib board, you have 60 holes um, on each side. Uh, that's 30 up and 30 back. Um, so I'm just marking each one of those at five mil increments and then marking across um, from one sort of reference edge with my square and then putting a uh, center punch hole uh, to allow me to do some drilling um, which you can see here uh, I'm just using a drill and I've marked the drill bit with a bit of tape just so I don't drill too far through um, I've gone down um, just enough to fit the pegs in um, when uh, when, we're, when we're moving out of the board. All the holes are drilled in both the boards. Uh, this board is definitely better than this board. Um, I've gone wonky in a couple of places, uh, diagonal, a bit of a curve, um, freehand drilling, uh, that precise is actually quite difficult. Um, and also I've got some tear out uh, in a couple of locations. Um, mainly because to start with on this board I was using the wrong drill bit I was using uh, one of these guys which is just a general purpose um, drill bit what I should have been using was this guy which is a brad uh, drill bit um, brad point drill bit which has got a point on and cuts better allows you to center it better and prevents a little bit of the the cut out um, this is, uh, the other one was probably all uh, blunt as well, so not ideal. Um, all there's left to do, cut these to size, uh, give them a bit of a sand, and finish. So I'm using my random orbital sander here, um, 120 grit and then 240. And then uh, I'm just using the router trimmer with a, um, a quarter inch round over bit on the side just to take the corners off. Um, this would have been quicker on a writer table, but I don't have one at the moment. Maybe I'll have to build one in the future, uh, and then I won't have to keep turning it and clamping it, because um, it actually takes quite a while. And then I'm just applying a finish of um, uh, Danish oil, just to give it a bit of protection. So overall, pretty happy with the way that the boards turned out. Um, my drilling uh, left something to be desired. Some of the holes are not vertical, um, but I could definitely do with a drill press, although actually, to be fair, I've got nowhere to put one in my workshop anyway. Um, and I definitely uh, have learned some lessons about um, gluing up uh, laminations for for boards. Um, I definitely need to uh, get better at doing the, the glue up so that I don't waste so much material when I start flattening. But pretty pleased with the way that my writer sled turned out and overall uh, happy with the, the boards.
so completely forgot to put the barbecue on earlier uh, so I'm putting it on a bit later now it's already dark but the chicken and the potatoes are on the barbecue so I'll see those in a couple of hours okay, so chicken has been on for a couple of hours now we've reached an internal temperature of 78 um, you can see the temperature of the smoker is up to 155 I turned it up to see if I could crisp the skin a little bit um, Safe working, safe working temperature, safe eating temperature for a chicken is 74, so um, I'm going to take it off, uh, let it rest, and then eat it. Hey guys, end of another day here on Matt Does Stuff. Um, today I've made uh, two crib boards, uh, wasn't really originally my intention to make two, but things turned out that way, it didn't quite go as planned um, with the the lamination of the wood and then the, the cutting but I'm pretty pleased with the way that my uh, router set actually held up in a in a project um, and I now have two crib boards I mean who doesn't want two crib boards um, so whilst I was doing that I was also smoking this which is a chicken and some potatoes so um, I suppose we better tell you what this tastes like so towards the end of the cook, I just turn the temperature up um, like really high just to get the, the skin a bit crisp uh, and that's turned out quite well but let's just have a taste of the, uh, of the meat. That is tender and juicy, a hint of apple smoke. Yeah, that is a good chicken. Oh, yeah, that rub is uh, that rub is nice. Um, let's just taste one of the potatoes. So again, these were on at the same time as the chicken. Uh, we're on for the same amount of time. We've got a good amount of colour on them. I can't taste the smoke on that as much. Um, but nice and crispy, soft in the middle, what more can you want? So I'm just going to plate this up and uh, get amongst it. So there we have it. Uh, I've got some roast smoked chicken, some smoked potatoes. I'm just serving that with a bit of uh, buttered seasoned greens. Uh, and as always, I'm going to be pairing this with beer. It can be any beer, but tonight I've got a little... Um, little tin of uh, Pride and Joy by Vocation. So you're going to see what that tastes like. Ooh, that's a juicy little number. Um, the only thing that's left to do is for me to go and find some gravy, which I seem to have forgotten, or a sauce. Or something. In the meantime, you stay safe and remember to get some stuff done.